Kionin is known as the homeland of the elven race. In a small settlement near the outskirts of Kionin, Calistria, the widow of a high-ranking elven diplomat, lived. She mourned her husband's death, but she truly regretted having never bore a child. She was alone and without her husband at a loss for direction. William Greyhorn, a human man traveling with a wandering group of entertainers, stole her heart and gave her the mew she needed to live again. They married and together bore a single child, a daughter. They named that child Ulasil. Ulasil to this day can remember when William Greyhorn, her father, would play his, his drums and the beautiful music that filled the night sky. The smell of ale in the air, the laughter, the feeling of safety, the feeling of love. This particular settlement was often visited by outsiders traveling to the capital city, Ayadara. While this was the ideal for trade and political endeavors, it also made a prime target for espionage, crime, and attack from outsiders. This winter, security had been increased as horses had been reported stolen and in some cases mutilated by local farmers. The council had decided to station more guards to these high-risk areas. As the village slept, all seemed peaceful. Only the sound of a cold wind blowing through the trees could be heard. Even the merchants were silent. Odd for a village that was accustomed to the bustling sounds of drunken adventurers. Ulasil was but 16 years young, especially for a high elf. She rose up from her bed. It was dark. The wind must have blown the lanterns out, she thought to herself. As she left her bedroom to retrieve the oil from the storeroom, she noticed a deep red light and subtle warmth emanating from her parents' room. She crept to the door cautiously and inched it open. As she peered a single eye through the crack in the door, she saw a large, dark figure looming over her father. The figure's eyes glowed a deep, dark red as it glared at him. Ulysseel wanted to scream as she noticed in her father's arms the body of Calistra, her mother, exhaling her last breath her father's hand thrusting a kitchen blade deep within the breast of, with fear in his eyes. He dropped her and began to grovel to the demon. I've done what you've asked of me, Dark Lord, he said. Spare me, please. The demon laughed <laughs> with a glorious bellow. Give me your child and you can live, human, it said to him. William blood of his wife fresh on his hands tears soaking the collar of his shirt forehead pressed against the floor between the feet of the demon raised his hand slowly and pointed in the direction of ulysseo's room daddy no she screamed and in a blink of an eye the demon was upon her a dark tentacle around her neck a wine tinge glowing eyes in her face. The demon spun around and with a single blow separated William's head from his torso. The head fell to the floor with a thud. The demon turned back to Ulysseel expecting the fearful pleas for mercy of the young girl. Ulysseel's face was quite the contrary. She was smiling. She stared at the head smiling as though she had forgotten the demon even existed. The demon, caught off guard by the reaction, took a moment to examine her briefly. What do you desire, child? The demon asked. Ulysseel turned her head, still being restrained by the tentacle, and said, Power. I want the power to end them all. The demon erupted with an even deeper, more sinister laugh. (laughs) You will see exactly that, child, it said. 
as it dragged Ulysseel out of her house and into the bitter cold night. Bodies littered the street. Elves, humans, dwarves spread indiscriminately. Ulysseel watched as the fires raged in, in the place where her father had once played his drum and beautiful music had filled the streets. Blood was spilled where her mother had danced. This is where she felt safe. But no more tears were in her widely opened eyes, nor did she struggle. Ula still, still had the burned image of her father's corpse in her mind, and it delighted her. It was all she could think about as the demon dragged her deeper and deeper into the snow-covered forest. Ulysseel was enslaved by the Tree Razor cult. A demon on high-ranking Glabrezu had decided to keep her as a pet. She could offer little but her musical performance and simple magic trick she had learned. And she despised the fact that she had learned the skills from her father, but continued to perform and cooperate in dark rituals. Ulysseel witnessed many sacrifices, many innocent lives taken for the mere whimsy of the Glasbrew. She was forced to sit at his feet, chained to his makeshift throne made of bone and skin. Watch, child, it would say to her, you will see death. Her body was adorned with demonic markings, but her quick tongue and ability to entertain with song made her invaluable. The demon declared that anyone that lay a hand on her would be punished with death. Weeks turned to months and Ulysseel no longer recoiled at sacrifices. She even began taking joy if the subject was human. They reminded her of her father, all liars. Please allow me to perform in the celebration of their deaths, she implored the Glassboro. Regal me, child, the demon snorted as it released her collar. She began to play her drum, but not a rhythm the camp had heard before. Ulysseel played emphatically, and the rhythmic elven beat from the drum laced with her father's magic filled the camp. The surrounding trees rustled and vibrated, the earth in tandem with her strikes. The cultists and the Glasboro closed their eyes in lieu of the mesmerizing song they could feel as well as hear. No one notices the elven arrow that whizzes by, killing an unsuspected cultist. Nor does anyone notice the second, the third arrow that goes whizzing by through the night. Each arrow making its mark in the heads of an enamored cultist. Ulysseo continues to play her drum, accenting each kill with crescendo as another and another arrow make way and hit their mark. And only Ulysseo notes the elven spearmen as they engage the depleted cultist. Queen Talandia had sent her most skilled warriors to dispatch what remained of the extremist guerrilla sect that had raised the elven settlement. Ulysseo continued to beat her drum, her strike seemingly dictating the flow of the battle as the superior elven numbers and skill overwhelmed the cultists in the Glasboro. She ended her performance as the demon fell to the four elven warriors. Wait, she said with a sharp slap of her drum. The soldiers held their swords as Ulysseo rushed over, sweating from her musical tirade. Let me do it, she screamed. One warrior laughed. Another one handed her the dagger. She knelt next to the Glassboro. Death will follow you, child, the mortally wounded creature whispered. She raised the dagger with both hands above her head and held it there. Thank you, Ulysseel muttered. Thank you for showing me the truth. As she got the words out, she delivered the killing blow to the demon. A single tear falls from her eye, the first tear she had shed since before she had been abducted. A tear. A single tear she would never have shed for her father or any human. They're all liars. <laughs>